Greetings, brethren. Today we'll be talking about 11 reasons you can't lose your salvation. So I thought up just a uh, simple list. Nothing too uh, in-depth or complicated for, for you. So we'll go through 11 reasons why you can't lose your salvation. First of all, One, it'll, uh, God will break his promise of uh, promising eternal life. Uh, John 11, 25-26, when Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this? And again in First John chapter five verses ten and thirteen, <clears throat> it says, "He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. Uh, and this is the record that God hath given to us. Uh, and this is the record that God giveth." hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son, that uh, he that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things are written unto you, that you believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that ye have eternal life, that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So, uh, <clears throat> to lose your salvation, God would have to break his promise of promising you eternal life. Two, uh, Jesus said, you shall not perish. Uh, John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Uh, Matthew eighteen fourteen. Even so, it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. The little ones, these the children that came to Jesus, his little ones, the sheep. So. If you lost your salvation, um, it would make these statements a lie. Uh, Jesus would be a liar. Uh, to uh, lose your salvation would mean that you shall perish, instead of Jesus saying that you shall not perish. Also, he said, you shall never perish. So, he... Um, <clears throat> If you lost your salvation, uh, Jesus would have to lie that uh, you shall perish. Uh, third reason that you can't lose your salvation that uh, is no one can, no one is able to pluck you out of uh, Jesus' hand and the Father's hand. No one. John 10, 27, 29, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Jesus speaking. Uh, Jesus is speaking here. That they follow Jesus. Um, Jesus' sheep hear um, Jesus' voice, and Jesus knows them, and uh, the sheep follow Jesus. So, um, so to reread this, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I sh I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which give them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. But people argue, well, can you hop out of the hand? Or take yourself out of that hand. Well, it says, uh, 
any man. Are you a man, a human? So it says, neither shall any man, would probably be uh, including you. You can't hop out of, uh, take yourself out of his hand. Um, because it says any man, you know. Um, so, <laughs> back to uh, no one's able to pluck you out of his hand, out of the Father's hand and Jesus' hand. So, next we we'll go to John 6, 39. And this is the Father's will, which hath sent me, that all that that of all which he hath given me, I should, should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. John 18, 9. That, that, uh, that the saying might be fulfilled, which he spake, of them which thou givest me, I have lost none. So, um, he shall not lose any of his sheep. Um, no one is able to snatch him away from uh, from him. And uh, he, Jesus says he'll lose nothing. And he, uh, those who the Father has given uh, Jesus, he says, I will lose none. So, to, to lose your salvation... You would have or Jesus would have to lose one of his sheep. Um, number four, Jesus imputes his righteousness to you and declares you righteous. Romans four eleven, and he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet been uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they did not they be not circumcised that righteousness might be imputed unto them also 2 Corinthians 5.21 for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made so made the righteousness of God in him so to lose your salvation you would have to um Make Jesus unimpute his righteousness to you. And you will have to make God undeclare you righteous. God has adopted you as children of God. Romans 8, 15 and 16. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Galatians chapter 4, verses 5 to 7. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might, be, might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the Spirit of his, of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. So, um, to, to lose your salvation, I mean, God has adopted your children of God. And, uh, heirs according to his promise, uh, to the promises of God. And, uh, to lose your salvation, he would have to disown you. Um, <laughs> that's why I would have to uh, put it. Um, people, other other people make the the, the argument that he, God would have to unadopt you, but I don't know if that would um, make any sense. So uh, God would have to disown you if you were to lose your salvation. Um, God has regenerated you. Uh, the sixth reason why God, uh, you can't lose your salvation, God has regenerated you and sealed you. You are born again. Uh, Titus 3, verses 5 to 7, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy have saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, 
which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Uh, Ephesians. Um, so, um, stop right there. Uh, if we were to lose our salvation, it would have to be um, that... Uh, how would you uh, lose your salvation when the regeneration is the operation of God? Um, he's the one that's regenerating you, so he would have to unregenerate you or um, cast you away or something like that. But uh, if he's uh, another reason why uh, the, the reason why he, he you can't lose your salvation, God has regenerated you and sealed you. So next, we'll talk about that he has sealed you with the Holy Spirit, that you are indwelled with the Holy Spirit, that's the sealing, that he placed his mark upon you, that he has owned, he, uh, he's your the possession. <laughs> uh, Ephesians 1, 13 and 14, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after you have that you have believed, ye were sealed with the with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of His glory. So uh, I want to point out the verse fourteen, which is the earnest of our inheritance. So being earnest is something like a promise. So the Holy Spirit is like a down payment, a, a promise to uh, a down payment um, marking you that you are the children of God. And he will, uh, um, until that, the redemption of the purchased possession, uh, his purchased possession, which is you, he purchased uh, the church with his blood. I mean, raise you uh, to, um, unto the praise of his glory. So Ephesians 4.30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye were sealed unto the day of redemption. So until that day, the day of redemption. So it's not yet. Uh, the day of redemption is not yet. So if you were to lose your salvation, um, you, you would have to make God... Uh, unseal you. I don't know if you, you can um, break that seal, but uh, it would make a lie that you weren't sealed or marked as a purchased possession until that day of redemption. So, sixth reason um, is that God has regenerated you and sealed you. Um, it would uh, mean that uh, he would have to do some something to unregenerate you and unseal you. Seventh reason is Jesus' blood is sufficient to atone for everyone's sins and uh, sufficient for to atone everyone's sins for all time. Um, 1 John chapter 2 verses 1 to 2 My little children, these things are right unto you, that ye sin not. And if a man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is a preparation for our sins and not for uh, our sins only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So he, he is a pro, uh, preparation, propitiation um, in his blood, and it, it's a uh, propitiation, propitiation for the whole world, for everyone's sins. Uh, Hebrews 8, 6. But now hath he obtained a more ex ele ele but now he hath obtained a more e excellent uh, ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which he established upon a better promises. So it's not a covenant just like uh, their fathers like a uh, uh, covenant according uh, that was given to Moses. Um uh, is built on a better priesthood. You know, it's not uh, if the Levitical priesthood, uh, uh, you know, um, 
It was perfectly, there wasn't any need for another priesthood, a better priesthood, made after the order of Melchizedek. And he's the mediator of that covenant, which is a better covenant, separate from better promises, and uh, a better sacrifice. Um, Hebrews 10, uh, verses 10 to 14. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all, and every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifice which can never take away sins. So, you see, the, once he uh, sancti uh, sanctifies, uh, we are all sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ, and we are sanctified of everyone um, once for all. And it's a better one that uh, the, the priest in the Old Covenant uh, was ministering daily. Um, which could never take away sin, but uh, this uh, sacrifice could take away sins, the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ. So we continue here in verse 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down in the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till, uh, expecting till his enemies, enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected uh, perfected us not only just perfected us but forever them that are sanctified so to, to lose our salvation um, you would have to say Jesus Christ's blood was not sufficient to atone for ever, the whole world's sins and it was not sufficient enough to atone for everyone's sins for all of history Uh, number eight, the uh, eighth reason you can't lose your salvation, there's no commendation for the believer. Um, John 3.18, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that uh, believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Romans 8.1, there is, therefore now, there is, um, Romans 8, verse 1, there is, therefore, now, no combination to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So now, um, which believeth in Jesus, are they have no condemnation. Um, so there's no condemnation for the believer. Um, to lose their salvation, would uh, you would have to bring, uh, you would have to be brought under a condemnation again. Number nine, the ninth reason, I mean, reason you can't lose your salvation is because you're redeemed from the curse of the law and not under the law. So how can you lose your salvation if you are uh, redeemed from the curse of law? There's no curse of law that upon you anymore. How can you lose your salvation? Um, Galatians 3.13 Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, uh, Curses everyone that hangeth on the tree. Galatians 4. Um, so he redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made that curse, taking that uh, punishment. And uh, Galatians 4, 4 to 5. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth the Son, made of a woman, made under the law, so he's subjected under the law, um, to redeem them that were under the law, that we may receive their adoption. Uh, Romans six fourteen. For sin shall not have dominion over us, but ye are not under the law, but under grace. Um, so, um, to lose your salvation... You would have to not <laughs> be unredeemed from the curse of law. You would have to be brought back under that curse uh, and uh, judgment. And you, in turn, that would mean you have to be brought back under the law. To be brought back under the law would be you're be brought back um, under the judgment and punishment. Um, tenth reason why you can't lose your salvation is because eternal life is a gift. 
Um, Ephesians 2, verses 8 to 9, For by grace ye are saved through faith, and not of yourselves, so it's not of yourselves that you're saved, uh, it's by grace through faith, it is the gift of God, not of works, least any man should boast, so it's the gift of God. Romans six twenty three. For the wages of the sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So, um, tenth reason why you can't lose your salvation because this eternal life was a gift. It's nothing really you deserved. It's not really a, a, um, a loan or anything. It's not like Jesus Christ was loaning you eternal life that you have to pay back someday or something like that. But it was a gift. To lose your salvation, you would have to say that gift wasn't good enough. You have to give back that gift and essentially... That gift wasn't a gift to begin with. On um, the final reason, I added the 11th, 11th reason instead of 10, 10 reasons to uh, that you can't lose your salvation is that God cannot lie. That's that's just uh, the lot uh, that God is the truth, and that lies within the, the very nature of his uh, nature of God, the attributes of God, that uh, because he's truth, he can't lie. So Hebrews 6, 18, the by two, that by two immutable things, or unchanging things, I'm just explaining here, I'm not re-translating it. Um, so by uh, that by two immutable things, in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation who have fled uh, for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. So it's impossible for God to lie. And this is an uh, immutable thing. Um, it, he, can't, he can't be changed to be able to lie. So, in Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither a son of man that he should repent, hath he said, uh, hath he said, and shall he not do it? Hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Um, some people come to this and say that God is not a man, that he can't become a man, that Jesus Christ uh, can't be God because um, it says God is not a man, but it's saying that he's not a man uh, because man, men lie. So he's not a man, that a corruptible man, that uh, he should lie, that he's able to lie, or neither son of man, or human, that he should re uh, repent of sin, or what have you. But he says, um, if he has spoken it, shall he not make, do it, and uh, do what he promises, and make it good, make it right. So, um, eleventh final reason that God cannot lie is it's rooted in its nature, is actually because He is the the uh, purest truth, purest righteousness. It's impossible for God to lie. He can't change that attribute to be able to lie. Um, he says He does not lie uh, when He promises something. Um, <clears throat> uh, he shall do it and make it right. So. Um, for you to lose your salvation, God would have to lie. He would have to lie about the promise of eternal salvation, uh, the, the, the lie of that he loved the world, that gave his only begotten son. Uh, he would have to lie that uh, you shall not never perish. Um, he would have to lie about all these things. But it's rooted in nature because he is truth. It's impossible for him to lie. He can't be changed. He does not change. So he, he, won't, he can't change himself to be able to lie. And he does what he promises. You know. He shall, uh, shall not. Uh, I, I have spoken it. Shall it not come to pass? You'll find in other passages. Um, shall he not do it? Shall he not make it right? Shall he not do what he says? So, if you were lose lose your salvation, he would have to lie, and then God wouldn't be God. You know. So, 
Uh, th those are eleven reasons. A simple list. Uh, a simple list. Not nothing in depth or too complicated for anyone. But, uh, eleven reasons. Uh, basic reasons that uh, you can't lose your salvation. So hopefully this gives you some insight and it helps you. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you and take care.